we have seen in the previous lecture that a point dipole gives me, gives me a vector potential which is mu 0 over 4 pi m cross r over r cubed. Using this now, we are going to show if I have a material, magnetic material which has a permanent magnetization capital M, something similar to the permanent polarization in the electrostatic case. So, that M actually represents magnetic moment per unit volume, then this is equivalent to bound currents and surface bound currents. Again similar to where a polarization in electrostatic case was equivalent to bound charges both the bulk bound charge and surface bound charge. Again to do this we take help of vector potential. So, when I have this system let us make this is at r prime and suppose I am calculating vector potential at r. Then I will take a small volume here near r prime and this will have a magnetic moment d m the small volume which is equal to m at r prime d v prime. And therefore, the vector potential d a differential vector potential at r due to this is going to be mu 0 over 4 pi m r prime d v prime cross r minus r prime, where r minus r prime is this vector from that point to the point of interest divided by r minus r prime cubed. And therefore, the vector potential A at r is nothing but mu 0 over 4 pi integral m r prime, this is a vector cross r minus r prime divided by r minus r prime cubed d v prime. Now, we are going to do some vector manipulations here and show that this is equivalent m r prime cross gradient with respect to prime of 1 over r minus r prime d v prime. Now, I am going to use a vector identity which is curl of f, where f is a scalar function times a is equal to gradient of f cross a plus f curl of a. Therefore, curl of 1 over r minus r prime which is like f m r prime and I should be taking curl with respect to the prime variable. So, notice prime here should be equal to gradient of with respect to prime variable 1 over r minus r prime cross m r prime plus 1 over r minus r prime curl of with respect to prime variable r prime. Okay. Let me write it again in different colors, so that you see it clearly. Curl with respect to prime variable of 1 over r minus r prime m r prime is equal to gradient with respect to prime variable of r minus r prime cross m r prime plus 1 over r minus r prime curl of m r prime. Right. Let us invert this sense put 1 over r minus r prime with respect to prime cross m r prime is equal to 
curl of 1 over r minus r prime m r prime minus 1 over r minus r prime curl prime m r prime. And therefore, m r prime cross del prime of 1 over r minus r prime, I have just switched m n gradient. So, they pick up a minus sign becomes minus curl of m r prime over r minus r prime plus curl of m r prime over r minus r prime. And therefore, the integral of this over d v prime is this integral d v prime integral d v prime. This again I am going to use an identity here which says that integral of curl of a vector quantity over a volume is equal to n cross that vector quantity over the surface. So, what this means is that if I have a closed surface enclosing a volume, this volume integral is equal to n cross v, where n is coming out of the surface over this surface. We can use this now here in the first integral and therefore, I write m r prime cross gradient prime of 1 over r minus r prime integral d v prime is equal to which is minus gradient prime cross m r prime over r minus r prime d v prime plus integral curl of m r prime over r minus r prime d v prime as equal to minus n prime cross m r prime over r minus r prime d s prime integral plus integral prime over m r prime over r minus r prime d v prime. So, what it means is if I have a volume where is there is some magnetic moment m, then the surface n cross m with a minus sign gives me the surface current this term and this is the like the bulk current. Why? Because I also know that a can be written a as, so let us make it again. Here is the volume on which I have some m, then I can write a r as equal to integral minus n prime cross m r prime over r minus r prime d s prime plus integral curl of m r prime over r minus r prime d v prime and this should be equivalent to a surface current k at r prime over r minus r prime d s prime plus a bulk current j r prime over r minus r prime d v prime. So, we get from this magnetic moment that it is equivalent to a surface current k which is equal to minus n cross m and a bulk current j which is curl of m. And since these are not free currents, we call them bound currents. 
just like we had bound charges earlier. Let us take a couple of examples. If I have a long cylinder with magnetic moment in z direction, uniform magnetic moment in z direction, then curl of m is 0, n is coming out of the surface. So, m uh, n is in the same direction as s in the cylindrical coordinates and s cross z gives you minus phi and therefore, n cross m with a minus sign is nothing but m phi. So, this long slender cylindrical magnet having uniform magnetization is equivalent to having surface current which is equal to m flowing in phi direction and no bulk current. So, this becomes like a solenoid the field will be constant inside. So, it will be like a solenoid field. On the other hand if I have a very flat thin wafer like or thin disk like thing with m in z direction this will be like a ring of current where the total current will be given by m times this width d that will be the current going through this. Third example I can take is that of a sphere with constant magnetization. Then again curl of m will be 0 and the surface current k will be minus n cross m which in this case will be minus m r cross z unit vector and you can check this is going to give me m sin theta phi. It is very easy to see because z is nothing but cosine of theta r minus sin of theta theta r cross theta gives me minus phi and therefore, k becomes m sin theta phi, but th this we have already solved this we have solved in a previous lecture and therefore, this is going to give me a constant magnetic field B which is 2 mu 0 k over 3 z inside and a dipole field corresponding to m equals 4 pi by 3 r cubed m outside.